Gyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Veda Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapi Tamyena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pucharine Hirse Sasunyavadi Pastyat Yadeis Dutarine Kanchakalpa Tarubischa Kripa Sindhu Vaibhacha Paditanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Vakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We'll conclude our discussion on the Shikshastika prayers with the final verse, verse number eight as mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Manchalila 20, chapter, verse number 47. And just to uh, give us another overview, these eight verses are the different stages of bhakti, as explained by Srila Rupa Goswami, who is known as the Abhi, Abhideya Acharya. Abhideya means one who teaches the process of bhakti. Uh, there is the Abhi, there is the Sambandha Acharya, which is Sanatana Goswami. That means one who connects one with the process. The Abhideya Acharya is Rupa Goswami, and he gives you the process. And uh, Raghunath Das Goswami is the Prayojana Acharya. He takes the process to the conclusion, which is Premu from Prema from Martha Mahan, which means to uh, reach the goal of love of God. Love of God is the goal of bhakti. It's the only goal because love is the highest and most sought after sediment of the living bedding's existence. Happiness can be described or in different ways, but happiness that comes from love is the supreme happiness. <laughs> Therefore, love is the supreme emotion and love is the purpose of existence actually. To receive love and to offer love um, sometimes we say Krishna is love, God is love. And love sometimes is being misunderstood. Love really means to focus on a particular object of your activity and serve that object according to how best that object can be served. In other words, in a pleasing way, with sentiments of uh, affection, that is love. Mm -hmm. In this world, one cannot experience pure love because the object that you're trying to give love to cannot receive. We, do, we might use an example that um, we are trying to give so selfless love, but because the object of whom we're giving that love to is imperfect, we can only give so much because of the nature of that imperfect object. And therefore we feel what we say, imperfect in the expression of our giving of love. There's a lack of wholeness that, uh, that manifests. One cannot perfectly love in this world because people cannot receive perfect love, nor are they worthy of receiving perfect love. 
but Krishna is <laughs> because Krishna is perfect in all respects and Krishna can reciprocate that love unlimitedly much more than we can offer and so the object of love is Krishna because Krishna is the source of love and he, his existence is based on exchanging love with his parts and parcels. Sometimes they say that it's also mentioned in the Shastras that Krishna at one time thought, boy, I'm all alone. I need some, someone to exchange love with. So he decided to expand himself into his different energies, which we are. Of course, those energies always existed within him. But just to give it a little understanding of how the Lord thinks, he thinks in terms of exchanging love with his parts and parcels. And that exchange is in a variety of ways through friendship, through accepting this, the position of being inferior and having uh, parents to the category of loving relationships between husband and wife, between boyfriend and girlfriend. And of course, just service in general, doing things that will please the beloved. These are all manifestations of how love uh, is exhibited. Now this last verse will begin as Lishyava Pararatam Penastumam Adarshanam Marmahatam Karotuva Yatatitava Vidadatu Lampato Matpranam Nastusa Eva Napara. This verse is recited by Srimati Radharani. Um, and it's the, it's love in meeting. We spoke about yesterday, and yesterday we spoke about love and separation, Vipra Lamba Bhav, as being the highest expression of loving sentiment. And Vipra Lamba Bhav, or loving, or love and separation, nourishes love in meeting, because without the separation, the love in meeting is not as satisfying and is not as intense. So the intensification of love, which comes from the eagerness to meet again the beloved, is intensified by the mood of separation. But the mood of meeting is what everyone is looking forward to or everyone is desiring to be again in the association of their beloved. So this is Lord Chaitanya, but he is speaking in the mood of Radharani's love for Krishna. And he says, let Krishna tightly embrace this maidservant who has fallen at his lotus feet, or let him trample me or break my heart by never being visible to me. He is a Dabanchi. So that word Dabanchi is there, Lampato. After, and after all, he can do whatever he likes, but still he alone and no one else is my worshipable Lord of my heart. So this is complete surrender and love. That even as it says here, he can trample me, he can break me, he cannot be visible before me. The word marmahatam is interesting. Here it's translated as broken hearted, but the Acharyas give a further explanation of the word marma. Marma is, for those of you who are, I don't know how many of you are, but uh, uh, somewhat knowledgeable about wrestling. Wrestling is a Vaishnava sport. It's one of the main sports engaged, that Vaishnavas engage in is wrestling. And there's a particular, uh, uh, what we say, uh, blow, you might say, or a particular way to hit someone in wrestling, and that's called marma. <laughs> so here the word marma means the same thing. You can break me by hitting me where it hurts. Where does it hurt? In the heart. 
so you can make me broken hearted. Still, it doesn't mean that my love for you will be any less. So this is, this is pure love. We see in the material world, if someone breaks the heart of someone wh whom they have a relationship with, the relationship has a tendency to become less, starts to diminish. Because as we explained, the, the mood of love in the material world is not perfect. In fact, it is mostly selfish. And therefore, the Acharyas gave a different, uh, different explanation of the word. They say in this world, love is really actually lust. Lust means selfishness towards satisfying one's own senses. So what goes on in the material world is people enter into relationships in order to fulfill their own desires. And that is normal. But in the spiritual world, the relationships are that everyone wants to make Krishna happy. Their own happiness is not even a consideration. <laughs> They're only thinking how to make Krishna happy. And it doesn't matter what is required to do that. That is their absorption, how to make Krishna happy. So I'll give two little stories. One is a kind of an antidote. And the other one's a little story that we hear from the Shastras. The story from the Shastra is that Narada Muni was with Krishna in the spiritual world. And Narada was asking Krishna, how, how is he? General, simple discussion. And Krishna says, well, today I have a headache. <laughs> oh, really? Narada said, oh, what can we do? Well, Krishna says, the only way my headache can get relieved is I need the dust from the feet of my devotees and place it on my head. That's the only medicine for my headache. Narada said, wow, who's going to give you their foot dust to put on your head? Which devotee? No devotee would think like that. But Krishna said, you know, why don't you go and see if you can find someone? And Narada said, sure, but I don't think I'll find anybody. So he went and came to the sages of Danya Karanya forest. Ah, well, they're so happy to see Narada. Oh, Narada, you come. You know, they start asking questions. They serve Narada really nice at first, and then they ask questions. That's the etiquette before you start to approach a spiritually elevated person. You offer some praise or some service first, and then you ask questions. In other words, you do something for that person first before that person is asked to do something for you. That's the etiquette. <clears throat> so Narada was, was received nicely and glorified nicely. They provided some gifts to for Narada. Then they asked Narada, how is Krishna? Oh, he said, well, that's why I've come. Krishna has a headache and he's not, he's not feeling good. Oh, really? So the sages were feeling unhappy. Well, what can we do? Well, Narada said, but Krishna has told me that the dust from your feet in fact, that's why I've come, to get the dust from your feet. And that dust will relieve Krishna's headache. The sages felt a little insulted, thinking, what are they asking for? To put our foot dust on the head of the Lord? This is most absurd. This kind of request is abominable. And so they became a little unhappy hearing Narada's request and refused completely. <clears throat> so Narada went to others and all oh, in the same reaction. No one wanted to put their, give their foot dust to put on Krishna's head. Everyone said, well, you know, if we put our foot dust on Krishna's head, <clears throat> we'll go to hell. So finally Narada comes back 
<clears throat> and he's unsuccessful. <clears throat> he comes and says, well, my dear Lord, I went to many of your devotees and they all said, no, they don't want to go to hell by giving their foot dust for your head. And Krishna thought for a moment and he said, well, why don't you go to Brindavan and see if you can meet the gopis and ask them. So Narada again, on the order of the Lord, he left. And after some time, he arrived in Vrindavan, and the, the, the gopis were so happy. Oh, Narada, you come. They, knew, they understood how close Narada was to Krishna, that he, he has many chances to get his personal association. So they started to ask questions about how Krishna was. And Narada said, well, actually, the Krishna has sent me here. He's got a headache, and he needs the dust from, the, from your feet to be put on his head. And that's the only thing that will relieve his headache. The gopis thought, wow, Krishna has a headache. Oh my God, that's terrible. But our foot dust, that is the solution. And they start scraping the dust off their feet. And the artist started to speak and he said, don't you know, if you put your foot dust on the head of Krishna, you'll go to hell? Narada, why are you even saying that? Just take the dust. We don't care. We'll go to hell forever if it relieves Krishna's headache. So Narada, he gathered the dust and came back, told Krishna everything that happened. And then Krishna said, yes, this is the gopis. So the gopis have that mood of service to the Lord. They're not even considering their own happiness. And even if they have to suffer to make Krishna happy, that suffering becomes their happiness. This is an interesting statement. If someone has to suffer to make another person happy, that person who is suffering, that's their happiness. So that, that actually starts to take the point of love. That's why Prabhupada said, in this world, the only and the only indication you can see where pure love exists is a mother's love for her child. The child cannot reciprocate the mother's love. The child is completely dependent on the mother. The child keeps the mother up at night. The child, you know, passes stool in his diapers, the mother. She has to take care of all that, keeps the child clean, keeps him happy, provides everything, and mostly her time and her love. She's always there for the child. Sometimes it's 24-7 when the baby is first born. But the mother likes it. She never considers an inconvenience that she has to do all these things. She accepts it as the burden of love and she enjoys doing it. So in the same way, this is a little bit of an indication of what real love is. A little antidote story that we also tell that Radharani, she knows that Krishna sometimes likes to associate with other gopis. Although her love for Krishna makes Krishna completely happy, Sometimes Krishna wants to taste the happiness of loving relationships with other gopis. You have to understand now that this is not some lusty desire on the part of Krishna. This is Krishna's way of pleasing these gopis who, who, have, who simply exist to give their love to Krishna. So Krishna wants to satisfy another gopi, but then Radharani thinks, you know, these other gopis, they don't know Krishna like I know gopi, and like I know Krishna. And I know how to make Krishna happy completely. So she goes to the other gopis that Krishna wants to associate with, and she teaches them how to serve Krishna nicely. Although in her heart, she wants to be with Krishna, still, because Krishna wants to be with another gopi. She wants to satisfy Krishna by 
making sure that the other gopi he's going to be with serves him in the nicest possible way. So this is one of the moods of Radharani. Of course, sometimes she acts in another mood where she gets angry at Krishna for going with other gopis. But Krishna likes that anger. It's, a, it's an exchange of love between Radha and Krishna. Love, love is called, there's one place in Barsana. It's right near Sriji Mandir. It's called Man Mandir. Man means anger. And there's a story connected with the, that particular temple where Radharani became angry at Krishna. But her anger is another expression of her love. So, so these are some of the indications of this last. I mean, there's much more on this particular that we could talk about in terms of the, the, the characteristics of this loving relationship, but it's completely self, selfless. There's no tinge. When people who are not qualified and hear about the loving relationships between Krishna and his devotees in the Vrindavan, they, um, they think in the wrong way. And their thinking is very offensive because spiritual love is not like material love. That's why we use the word love in the material world. It's more like a euphemism. It doesn't really mean love. It means how to satisfy my desires in relationship to someone else. And we call that love. I'll give something to someone else, but I have to get something in return. If I don't, then, then I'll find someone that I can do that with. So in this material world, generally, the need, our personal desire to receive love is just as strong as our desire to give love. But receiving love in the spiritual world is the same as giving love. So though in the spiritual world, Krishna finds great happiness making the devo his devotees happy, and the devotees find great happiness making Krishna happy. And there's a competition who can, who can uh, make the other person more happier. So each tries to find different ways to satisfy and make the other person happier. And Krishna always wins <laughs> because no one, he's the best in all categories and therefore he's the best of all lovers and also the best of the beloved. But therefore sometimes it says that one of the names of Krishna is Madan Mohan. Madan refers to Cupid. Cupid is that, uh, sometimes you see, it's sometimes caricatured in the uh, material world as this little baby who has wings and he has a bow and arrow and he flies around and he shoots his bow and arrow. And when you get hit in the heart with this arrow, then you're loved. <laughs> Sometimes they say that, well, I fell in love. Yeah, that's what it's like getting hit with an arrow. So in the material world, this kind of loving relationship is, uh, is, is conducted by the king of all lovers and that is Cupid. And, but Krishna is called Madan Mohini, Madan Mahan, I'm sorry, Madan, Madan Mahan. That means he can attract that person who attracts people in the material world, Cupid. He's the attractor of Cupid. But there's another person who is the best of all the attractors who attracts the one who attracts everyone. And that is Radharani. So she's called Madan Mohan Mohini, the one who attracts the attractor. And therefore there is no better devotee anywhere in existence than Radharani. She is the topmost because her love is pure, it's perfect, and we say selfless, but we use that just for the sake of understanding, but real love is selfless because if love is not selfless, 
it's not love. It's a combination of a mixture of affection, attachment, and personal needs like that. Okay. And these are some of the points that we can think about in terms of this. This last verse is really quite powerful. And it's it's called uh, Sambhog. Uh, love is called Vipralamba, Bhav, and Sambhog. Sambhog means meeting, Vipralamba means love and separation. And as we mentioned, love and separation, and we explained that in detail in yesterday's class, is the highest expression of love, even higher than the love of meeting. So if you study the, uh, or just go through the different words in this particular verse, you'll find panastu mam, pinastu means trample me, adarshanam means not being visible to me, marmahatam means you break my heart, and lampato means, why well, he's a debauchee, he mixes with other ladies. Still, it doesn't matter. He's still the Lord of my life. <laughs> Mat Pranam, Prananatha, the Lord of my life. <clears throat> okay, so we'll stop there and uh, uh, just recap by saying that this last verse is the culmination of the process of bhakti. It's the goal of bhakti to come to the platform of being fully absorbed in serving Krishna in the mood of love. And you, sometimes you see in the material world, people exhibit this kind of mood. Uh, a person will have a relationship with someone and that's all I can think about is that person. Whatever they're doing is about meeting that person. Whatever they're thinking, it's always in relationship to that person. Their whole life, everything about them, all they can do is think about that person. So you can see how even in this world, people can develop that mood of attachment to another. Of course, that, that attachment is based on a combination of selflessness and selfishness. But what we're speaking about is how that mood plays itself out. And you'll see, and this is very common, when a person loses the opposite, their partner in love, um, they can't function anymore. And they, they see everything in, their, in life as being completely uh, useless or sources of unhappiness. So that loving emotion is the essence of the living entity's existence and it reaches perfection when it goes to Krishna. In another term it's called adiras. And it's interesting because love and lust is like the same word practically. When love is diverted away from Krishna and towards other objects, it becomes lust. And when that same love goes back to Krishna, it becomes again, it's pure, pristine, flowering expression of devotional love. But the point is, is that it's the same energy. It's the same energy. It's just diverted, just like if you have electrical energy and you plug in a fan and you turn it on, you get cooling. If you plug in a heater and you turn it on, you get heat. The energy is the same. The reciprocal makes the expression of, makes the energy act in one way or the other. So in the same way, love for Krishna, when it's diverted towards this material world, in the objects of the material world, it comes in the form of lust. But when that same energy is devoted, dovetailed or brought back to Krishna, 
then it's back in its natural state. So to love Krishna is natural. <laughs> and it's easy to love Krishna because Krishna is lovable. And the more you know about him, the more that love awakens. <laughs> so learning about Krishna means loving Krishna more and more. Serving Krishna means loving Krishna more and more. Okay, so we'll open it up for discussion. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for another Nectarian class and this series on <clears throat> Shikshastakam. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And uh, like personally, it has helped me a lot in uh, chanting. And I'm sure other devotee might be feeling the same. Like this is very, very powerful prayers. And uh, like, I feel like more and more, I really understand these verses. I feel like I know Krishna more, less and less. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Well, that's, that means you're learning. <laughs> so, if you, so. uh, that, that is the characteristics of knowledge is the more you learn, the more you realize how little you know. Yeah. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, uh, you can unmute yourself now. Or if you want me to read, you can please uh, write it on the chat box. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, this class was just really, really, really amazing. And, and uh, I really uh, feel uh, how long way to go. <laughs> um, but I just started to relate it to, uh, to my, uh, my current life. And um, uh, we, we have our relationship with Krishna, but we also have relationship with uh, devotees in different moods. And uh, lately I, I had uh, some difficulty about how selfless I should be uh, when, when it's about friendship. And um, it's still uh, uh, such a topic which I, I, I don't really know what to think about because obviously as devotees, we should be uh, friendly towards uh, everybody, but uh, uh, how friendship uh, is uh, in this regard? I mean, uh, there should be some kind of re reciprocation, uh, I assume, um, but uh, but we shouldn't expect it. Or I don't know. Can you say something about this? Well, it's friendship is one of the relationships. Also on the spiritual platform, it's here in the material world too. But this friendship is tinged here with, with the desire to gain something in that relationship. A friend is one who knows you and knows how to make you happy. That's a friend. So when you get to know people, then you can see what, what would make them happy. Just like if you learn that someone likes a particular type of food. So then you might cook something, you might cook that item for them to show your love for your friend. Like that. That's an expression of that love in that relationship. Doing some service. And of course, of course, as is mentioned in the, in the uh, Nectar of Instructions, if we talk about Krishna to others, we develop friendship based on uh, hearing about Krishna, speaking about Krishna. This is, this is one of the loving relationships between devotees, is speaking about Krishna, hearing about Krishna. So find out what, what, you know, uh, there's one devotee, she's my god sister, she stays in America. She's about my age, she's quite elderly. 
and she does Pajari work. And, uh, and she also preaches too. She does some book distribution, but she's very personal. When she's on the altar, when she gets off, she collects a lot of the Maha Prashadam and puts it in little bags. And then she keeps these little bags with her all day. And when she meets someone, she gives them a bag of a little few bits of Maha Prashadam. So this way she has a nice relationship with everyone. She's always thinking how to do something for someone like that. So she uses Maha Prashadam as a medium for that loving exchange. And that's one of the loving exchanges to give Prashadam to receive it. So in relationship to others, you just have to think what will make them happy. Of course, sometimes we think, well, what will make them happy, but at the same time, what will make me happy? That's not so bad, but at the same time, but if it, if it makes you happy and it doesn't make them happy, then it's all about you. Yes, actually, my difficulty is that I, I had this feeling that uh, one of my friendship is uh, one sided, uh, so to say, and uh, I, I felt that uh, maybe I'm not a good friend because I have expectations and it's, uh, you know, it's just like the, the love, uh, uh, which is uh, said to be something like a business. <laughs> and. Um, and I just feel bad that I, I'm, I'm not a proper friend, but, but I'm, I'm just feeling that maybe it's, uh, it's not how friendships work. So, so that's why it, uh, it became a uh, question for me. Uh, I wouldn't give it so much, uh, you know, just be, be natural. <laughs> And uh, how can we uh, decide whom we should give our trust? Because well, that's... That's, that's, that's something you have to know. Because mm, if trust is broken, then relationships are also broken. So you have mm -hmm. to give trust to those you, who are trustworthy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that you have to know a lot ahead of time. If you're not sure, then you should give yourself some time before you can open up more of your personal life to that person. Yes, it's uh, it's very helpful. Thank you very much. I I never would have thought that such basic things are not so clear for me. <laughs> Love and trust go together. Actually, that's the basis of our success in our society. We wouldn't need so many rules and regulations if there was more love and trust, because love and trust becomes the rule and regulation. Mm -hmm. And that's what Srila Prabhupada wanted, to have that loving relationship. But because we don't have it and we keep legislating more rules and regulations in order to get things done because we think that's the solution but that's just the uh, default the default program is because we're not developing love and trust we have to kind of legislate love and trust in the form of rules and regulations and that's not love and trust that's just so so the, the society can function. It's interesting. Thank you very much. It was very, very helpful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Haribol. I was wondering if it's okay, I'd like to share something related to what um, Radhavi Nodhani was talking about, um, if that's all right, just a couple, just a quick inspiration. Yeah. Please yeah, so, want to hear from the devotees, please. Um, so 
Radha Vinodhani, what you're talking about is something I can relate to very much. And in talks with um, my mentors, I just wanted to share a very practical piece of advice that Bhakti Tirtha Swami once gave one of his disciples who passed it to me. And Bhakti Tirtha Swami said, it's, it's not realistic to say you shouldn't have any expectations, like that feels a bit ideal, but not realistic. And he said, you should, you, your closest association should be with people whose default behavior matches your expectations. And everybody else is people that you love and you serve, but you don't necessarily get super close to. And then Satchinandan Swami says, it's actually very rare to find those people who are like-minded and whose default behavior matches your expectations. And so when you find them, he said, you're lucky if you can find two or three or a handful of those people. And you said, when you find them, those are the people that you hang on to for dear life, that you, you know, those, those are the, the mirrors that help you grow in your Krishna consciousness. Doesn't mean those relationships will be perfect, but those are the relationships that you invest in. So for me, that's been very um, comforting as it relates to this. As uh, not only comforting, but it, have, have you had that experience? <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. I think um, when I was younger, I, I cared a lot more about trying to be best friends with everybody and also feeling like a lack of reciprocation from some people. And as I get older, I, I realize how valuable it is just to have, I, I realize how lucky I am just to even have a handful of, of those types of people that would die for me and I could die for them. If you just have one, it's sufficient. <laughs> Just one. Yes, Marish. The thing is that we can't imitate Radharani's mood of love. It's not possible. If you do, you'll it'll be something different. It's not. But with Krishna, because Krishna's perfect. And Krishna is not a, a, he will reciprocate. There's no question about it. How he reciprocates or when he reciprocates, that's secondary, but he does reciprocate. Can you repeat the one about Bhakti Tirta Swami again? It seems to be an interesting one. Yes, Maharaj, he said that we should the closest association should be with people whose default behavior matches our expectations. Okay. Default means in the, in this context, what is default referred to? Meaning you don't have to teach them what you need and what you expect. It's kind they're, you're already kind of on the same page as them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what Rupa Goswami says, developing relationships with like-minded devotees. And that's one of the principles of bhakti. And Gurmaj, related to this verse, um, I was speaking to somebody yesterday who um, was upset because she didn't get that she wanted and she was asking me um, when I, you you broke up right when you were saying your point she was sorry. upset was upset because yes grandma she was upset because she uh didn't get a job that she wanted and she asked me, um you know in the spirit of this verse like how do i maintain my faith when when things don't go my way and 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 she's very young and very very sincere in her krishna consciousness but i feel like even you know, for those of us who have been in bhakti for a while, like it's a hard concept to grasp. Can you say a few words about? Yeah, in the material sense, how do we know what's best for us? We 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 project. This is what I need, and this is what I want. And we don't get it. But is it, does that mean it's going to make us happy? That you can't guarantee, and we don't even know if it's the best thing for us. So we can accept things in the material sense when they don't go our way because there are so many reasons why they may not be good for you and even if they are 
there's so many options where there's other things that are equally fine. So why do we put so much, uh, we, all right, you wanna do something and you try for it, you don't get it, okay. So then you move on to something else. But why should you be upset because you didn't get, you know, you, the mind builds up all these things that this is what I want and this is gonna be what's, what I need and this is gonna make me happy. So we create this, this uh, uh, scenario in the mind ahead of time. And then because we build so much emotions on it, when it doesn't come true, the opposite is frustration, anxiety, disappointment. And as people also who are devotees, they blame Krishna for that too. They want something and they pray to Krishna for it and Krishna somehow or other doesn't allow it to happen. And they think, what's wrong with Krishna? I prepare, I'm sincere, this is what I really need. And Krishna's, he's all powerful. And I'm giving Krishna every day one flower. So I'm showing my love for him. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> People, yeah. That's why if you really want to be happy, the less expectations you have, the more happier you are. Because expectations will sometimes not be fulfilled. Like that. But if you expect only to serve, and in the service, there's happiness in the service there's satisfaction if you're not getting that then you're not in the right then you're not understanding what is service service itself is satisfying and Prabhupada said and we and we have nice prashadam so everybody gets that But it's important and it's essential to have relationships with other devotees. But how do you enter into a relationship not seeking what you can get? There, there may be an indication. I mean, uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur Bhakti Vinod Thakur both says, whenever there's a prayer, there's a desire for something. So, if you want love, give love. So, the point is when we want something, we try to get it. But when you want, when you actually give what you actually want to get, you get it. If you want to be happy, make other people happy. Does that make sense? Yes, Gurmesh, thank you so much. That's all you got to say? Come on, you gotta you gotta come back and defeat me on that one. <laughs> I don't wanna be a one way street. I just say something and everybody agrees. You have to kind of challenge what I say or find some different angle and show the, show the faults in what I'm saying. So you might say, well, I'm giving, but I'm not, and therefore I keep giving, 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 and I'm not getting anything. So I'm losing my enthusiasm to give. So you could use that argument against against my statement. So then take that argument and build on it. And, uh, yeah, so take that argument and build on it and see, see where you can go from there. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, 
Ok, ora sto uscendo a Prabhupati, sì, Susanna. Hare Krishna. And, um, I would like to have a, um, to ask a question about what happens when the mood is not what we expect. I don't want to expect anything from anyone, but when, um, the other day I had a very bad experience with one of my family members about something and I tried to be as tolerant and humble as I, as one could be in a situation, but it turned out to be, um, just awkward. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> tell anymore about it. It's too long. Well, yeah. we, we, we mentioned in the very beginning of our discussion that in this material world, because the object that you're interchanging with is not perfect and cannot understand or reciprocate, you'll always find that these situations occur. But with Krishna, it's not like that. <laughs> so in a material world, you can expect these things. <clears throat> I mean, I've heard stories where, you know, where husband married to a wife, the wife gets inheritance from her from her parents, the husband tries to steal it. He becomes successful in stealing it, takes all the money, goes away and finds another girlfriend with her money. That's a true story. And what if one's father is like this? <laughs> Sorry to mention this, but it's just too overwhelming <laughs> for me. In the material world, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, it's all there. Hmm. Yes, unfortunately. Unfortunately, because this is what we are being told. Yeah, so therefore, if you want, if you want, if you want a perfect loving relationship, it's in Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. If you want one in this material world, it has to be based on Krishna consciousness principles. Yes, and therefore, in, in our relationships in this world, we should make sure that everyone is following the principles that make the relationship successful, or what we say, uh, progressive. Mm -hmm. If the husband is working all day and he's bringing home money and the wife is just taking the money and she's going to the, the local uh, grocery store and putting the money on some on some uh, gambling program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then when the husband comes home, there's nothing there to eat. She says, well, I've been busy all day. I haven't had time to cook. So you go in the refrigerator, you might find something to eat. Mm -hmm. So these are these are these are not exaggerations. Mm -hmm. If you want a re loving relationship, you have to invest in it. And again, as uh, Bhakti Tirtha Swami, you know, even to accept the, the default attitude of someone is the best possible situation that you can possibly get. So with, the, I, with the devotees, the devotees should be up to the standard. That part is kind of okay in my life nowadays. Um, uh, only I, um, I can't deal with this um, material side of it all. Well, you can expect in the material world, everyone is interested in what they can gain from every, anything they do. That's the way the material world works. Control game is the yeah. only. Mm -hmm. I can be nice to someone. I can even serve someone if I'm going to get something from it. 
-hmm. Maybe I am the one to change <laughs> in this respect. I'm not sure. Is there any prayer to get cleaned more and more or gradually uh, from our material uh, demands towards others? Maybe I, I get all these things because this is how uh, Yeah, try to make friends and develop relationships with people who have, who are like-minded, have the same, same nature as you, same understanding as you, same interests as you. Mm -hmm. Then it's be then it becomes more natural in that relationship. It's like sometimes I see, you know, a devotee is married to a non-devotee, and so you know, and that devotee has to really work extra hard to make that relationship work, or even to keep it going, or to work around it where they can practice their Krishna consciousness. And at the same time, keep the relate to keep their marriage going. Now, in one sense, it's good because that person will, will become more devoted to Krishna. But if one is not strong, then the fact that in association when one who is not on the same understanding or liking is me can also drag me down you can either pull that other person up or that person can drag you down either one and i've seen both happen That's why the Vedas mentioned one should develop friendship based on uh, like-mindedness, nature and likings, your common interests and your similar natures. These are friendships and marriages are based on these two, common natures, common likings. And so if you're ready in a situation which is not like that, you got to try to make it work somehow. Mm -hmm. Or you can get another relationship. But strengthening, strengthening our relationship with Krishna means strengthening our relationship with people in this world. Because Krishna is in the heart of everyone. Krishna is the source of everyone. Krishna is the supreme controller in all times, in all places, and all, for, for all persons. The more we become Krishna conscious, the more easy and more natural it is to reciprocate with others. At least from your side, there are people who... who you just can't reciprocate with because they're already adverse to who you are or what you are. That's a whole different story. Though. And does one have to cut off, um, even if it's um, one's father, if it's too uh, hurting or rather, I wouldn't say, um, offensive, but I try as I might, I can't be um, respectful. And I don't want to hurt anyone. Um, well, respect cannot be, cannot be forced, it has to be earned. You can, <laughs> you can respect the person for the fact that they're part and parcel of Krishna. That form of respect can be there. But when it comes to the interaction with that person, then there has to be more than just that understanding. That's why in Bhakti Vinoda courses, I can I live life happily because I respect everyone. 
it doesn't mean everyone is respectable. It means that everyone has this element of being connected to Krishna. And from that perspective, I can respect that person because Krishna is in their heart. Mm -hmm. But then you don't associate. You only associate with those who you can associate with, who you can reciprocate with. You can be friends with a few and you can be friendly to many. Mm -hmm. hmm. Thank you very much. Hmm. Hmm. You can't change other persons. You just have to change yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Or if something becomes too impossible to continue, then you have to move on. We shouldn't let other people cause us to go down in life. We either bring people up or we don't associate. Someone's bringing you down, you leave that association. You can bring them up. That's the best. If you can, then don't let them bring you down. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, we have uh, two devotees who have raised their hands, uh, 17 past one it's already, so maybe we can take these two, uh, yeah. last question. Yeah, I have time today, so we can okay. go as, lo as long as you want to go. Okay, so Diptesh Prabhu, you please want to unmute. Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is Mansi. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shura Prabhupada and all glories to yourselves, Maharaj. Um, uh, I have a few follow-up questions from this today's discussion. First is that you said that we should um, leave <clears throat> the relationship or we should uh, try to keep a distance when we see that somebody is bringing us down. So just to clarify that somebody is bringing us down in the sense that uh, in our confidence or in our values or in the in the modes that affect us like if I'm in a mode of passion and dealing with somebody is bringing out the qualities from me of ignorance that kind of um, criteria they're bringing out what qualities in you mode of ignorance qualities you know mm -hmm. well again if you're in that relationship, you have to try to bring it to the mode of goodness by exhibiting those qualities. If you're not strong enough, then you go down. That's, that's natural. If you're in a lower relationship, you have to be in a better position to help the relationship rather than accepting a lower position just to keep the relationship going. So we do that. I mean, it's not like it's an immediate thing. We try to make something work, but when we see that there, all the efforts to develop uh, a better relationship between myself and another person is not working after a period of time, then you may find yourself having to develop, uh, you could try it, try to bring that person up from different angles of vision. The best thing is to become Krishna conscious. And the more you're Krishna conscious, the more it is, the easier it is Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Also, yeah, Radha Bhakti's point was interesting. <laughs> Um, it depends how strong you are. If you're not strong enough, you know, get out of there. But if, you, if you're strong enough, then you, you should be strong enough. Because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gives a nice thing. He says, if other people's bad, other people's faults are disturbing you, then look inside yourself and see what about yourself is causing you to become disturbed.
Mara, generally, I have found that it's my incapability to deal with the situations. I have less tolerance and patience, and that's why I cannot deal with the people who talk reasonab unreasonably or, you know, whatever bad quality or negative quality they might have. But the quality that I don't carry is I don't have enough patience and tolerance with them. And that's why then I get angry, I get irritated, I get frustrated. No, no so that's, not, that's not the thing. The, the idea is that when people act like that, you get out of there. And that's a message that that's a message to them that you, they're off. We had a devotee, his famous devotee, his name was um, Jayananda. So as soon as someone would talk bad about another devotee, if he was around, he'd leave immediately. And then everyone understood, oh, Jayananda's leaving, we're talking wrongly. So either you, if you're, if you're getting angry, that means you're accepting it. Either you don't accept it or you leave it. Not accepting it is the means that you keep your consciousness free from being dragged down from what they're trying to give you. Or bring them up somehow. <laughs> but if you just get angry and then, then the reciprocation becomes lost or becomes worse, you know. You get angry or frustrated, or you, you know. But sometimes so bring them up, or you have to somehow or other, if you can't do that, then you have to just like if somebody's talking bad about a person, start talking good about the same person. And then the person gets the message. If you don't want to hear something bad about a person, which we shouldn't things about other persons because that's their problem they're starting to dump it on you and because you're there you're getting it so do you have to be the garbage dump so Mara, the problem that i have been facing <clears throat> is within the family relationships that it's it, you can't even walk away when you are dealing with the with the elders so i have started keeping distance but at the same time i know that the expectation is there to um, communicate openly but when we try to communicate openly then the thought process doesn't match and then well, that you have to know how to do it or at least you have to have an idea what you're going to say in such a way that it's not going to agitate the situation. Hmm. Yes. If you're stuck into that family ties, then it becomes something you have to solve. <laughs> yes. Um, otherwise, you know, you know, this like I, I get a lot, I get reports from devotees that, you know, my in-laws are living with me and they're trying to control my marriage. <laughs> you, sounds familiar? Yeah, in families. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in Indian families, you know. The, uh, the husband's parents will live with the family and then they'll try to control the wife. <laughs> and the wife will get frustrated she can't do anything. It's all she has to listen to her husband's parents telling her exactly how to live in the marriage, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so Maharaj, should we carry any guilt? Because I carried guilt for many years. Devotees helped me to come out of the guilt. Because when you decide to distance yourself, when you cannot go out of the relationship, as you advised that um, I, should un I should know how to speak so that the situation doesn't get agitated. But then we know the expectation is there to communicate or to do certain things. And I'm very cleverly avoiding those things. 
So the guilt remained in me for a long time that knowingly I'm doing these things just because I'm not able to change my nature. I'm not able to surrender. But then the surrender was not at all possible. So it was very hard for me to decide what's right and what's wrong. Hmm. Well, then they might, you might have to see that will, that requires a third party to be a medium to understand the situation because we're just speaking in a, a general sense when it comes down to the details and all the activities that make up the relationship. You might have to sort that out with a, with a, thir a third party to help out. That's called the, family. We have it. We have it in our society. We have devotees or family counselors. <laughs> we have persons who are individual counselors and family counselors. They're actually trained. They have that. Uh, they have that training in their education, mm -hmm. and they come into Krishna consciousness and they use it to help devotees in these different. Like I just had this one girl her I won't mention any names so uh, she's having problems with her husband because uh, she wants to practice Krishna consciousness and he's against it so she doesn't know what to do so you know I'm trying to give advice but you know how much do I know so I referred her to this one counselor who's good at these things and just by a few exchanges with the counselor, wow, the whole situation changed. She she developed the and the mindset she needed to deal with the situation, where she could deal with her husband and at the same time practice her Krishna consciousness. She couldn't do both, and so that counselor had that ability to understand the situation and work with her. Okay, last point of discussion, Maharaj, following this up, that whenever I, ref I ask my mentor or any devotees, they would say that whatever I have been doing is correct. And when we ask like distancing myself and limiting the communication and all those things. But when you speak to the family members, um, you don't get the same view all the time. And because I know that I want to go ahead in Krishna consciousness, so I always go with what devotees tell me to do. But in my heart somewhere, Maharaj, I at a very minute level, I have overcome my guilt, but at a minute level, I still carry that guilt. And I don't know why I'm not able to get rid of that. Mm, the guilt of what, what is the nature of the guilt? Where, how did it come from? So the nature of the guilt, meeting my relationship with some of my immediate family members, because either um, on a material level, they cannot see what I'm doing or they don't appreciate what the way I deal with situations and they cannot even accept Krishna consciousness. So on both levels, spiritual level and on spiritual level, there is no match of thought process. And so I have distanced myself mm -hmm. and very, very immediate family. So I know that the expectation is there that I go close to them. I have a very nice close relationship with them, but I'm not able to give that because of these two grounds. So on a, on a very minute level, I'm still not able to get rid of my guilt completely. It's not guilt. It's just that there's, there's this, this element that, you know, you can't just completely uh, come to the point of what being what they expect you to be. And so that guilt is coming because, you know, you feel like you're, you haven't come up to the standard that they want you to be. For, for whatever reason. I mean, there, there might be certain people who will tell you, you know, to keep the harmony in the relationship, just do whatever they say, as long, as long as it doesn't cause you, um, you know, something very drastic. If you can somehow just be amenable or 
amiable in every situation. Then it would be, uh, that means you might have to make some sacrifices here and there just to keep the, the relationship pleasant. But then again, you know, it can't be, if it's forced, it'll take time for it to happen or it may not happen if it's forced. If it's understood that this is the way that things will happen for the better, then it becomes easier or more natural. Yeah, okay. And yeah, it's, it's just the way it's world. I mean, Prabhupada, he, he left his wife because his life, his wife was not following him in Krishna consciousness. You might say it was his destiny to leave because he had that, you know, mission. But still, as it was playing itself out, he tried to bring his family along. But his wife was not interested. She was more interested in, in drinking tea and... <laughs> was her, her main activity. Now, even Prabhupada, Prabhupada left his family and his family didn't, his family even were angry about him because he left. But Prabhupada, you know, he tried to bring them along, but they just didn't want to go on. So he left. <laughs> so I, Saying you should leave. <laughs> I'm saying sometimes when a situation gets to a point where it's impossible to carry it on, then then you might have to see where where's the what's the what what's the next step. I'm not advocating breaking up families. I'm just saying these these are situations that do happen where there's there's no recourse but to get out of the relationship. <laughs> Yes, um, thank you so much because um, this helps, this will help me. Whatever you have explained me in the last bit um, about the guilt will definitely help me. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, speak to your husband about it, and that will help you a lot. <laughs> He's very different than me, Maharaj. He's not at all emotional. <laughs> He thinks he sees he, he sees things in a very different way. He just thinks I'm being silly. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks topics are not at all big. I'm just making them big. I think it's a woman thing, you know. <laughs> hey, uh, I'll just take the Fifth Amendment right now. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, Maharaj, the assurance um, I get by what you are saying is definitely helpful. Yeah. Life is based on relationships. That's life. And the, the ultimate relationship or the perfect relationship is with Krishna. Yes. Yeah. That's what I need to focus most on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gradually, you know, hopefully it will come, Maharaj. Yeah. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you Radha, for Radha Bhakti Mataji has also shared one very nice uh, things on the chat. Uh, it's an extension to your point, Maharaj, that less least expectation in life. She had mentioned sometimes those relationships are there for us on purpose to hold a mirror to us so we can see our anarthaj and where we need to grow. Yeah, if we hold the mirror up, we can see where we need to grow. And also Maharaj, if you allow just like two minutes I, or third, one minute, I got one story on relationship in one other class yesterday only, exactly same topic where he mentioned that how like relationships are normally people changing. So he mentioned that uh, it's a live example. 
that one mataji in uh, out of india she was very very disturbed with uh, her in laws and uh, she came to a point that i want to just get rid of and she asked her brother in india can you send me a poison <laughs> i need to just uh, take their life off so he just said okay fine but i will send you this poison on one condition that for one month you will treat them very very nicely no argument nothing whatever they say just keep following and keep giving them this dose every single day very little dose of poison after one month it will be over and she started following the same thing for one month she like every day she was giving that poison and like she did not have any discussion any argument and she was trying to to do best and towards the end of this month she started having very good relationship with uh, her and uh, she felt like why i am giving this poison oh krishna like now they are going to die but i don't want them to die and she called her brother that is there any way i can like reverse this uh, i don't want them to die so he asked why he said no they are becoming very good like actually it was my fault i was not treating like i was expecting on my own way and things have changed but they are giving me so much love i don't want them to die and he said no don't worry this poison was nothing because you asked me to send a poison this was not a poison this was just a multivitamins but actually now you got the lesson so how you can turn the relationship so very good actually learning for me that yeah that's that's that, that's that's a that's a landmark program yeah that's yeah yeah when we change we change others sometimes we say that if you want to change others change yourself yeah well that, that yeah that that's that's the best part of the whole class that class that story <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj Deepthi Mataji want to ask one question. She has raised her hand. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. All glory to you. All glory to Shri Lakshmi. Thank you so much for lovely class. It was really nice explanation. And actually, uh, what uh, Vivek Prabhu said, we had a discussion last Friday on the same topic. And uh, on that one, uh, the senior devotee who was taking the class explained that. uh krishna is in everyone and if you if suppose someone is behaving harsh with you or they are difficult with you then you should immediately understand that krishna is trying to teach you some lessons from that person because krishna is there already in that person's heart and try and and try and understand so you be, you don't leave your krishna conscious behavior follow everything and if eventually you will see the change so yeah i completely agree with that story that if you change yourself it will help others oh, to yeah. change yeah that's the way to do it yeah also guru mara the question was not that sorry the question is uh if suppose some uh, if this is relation with krishna now directly that if suppose some person has lost so my so many of the dear ones like half the family is gone financially they have lost so much and before that before all these thing happened they had full faith in krishna but after all these thing the how do you make that person to have some faith in krishna because whenever i try to talk to that person it have it like comes up with that oh my everything has been taken away by him so how can i trust him how well, do that yeah that krishna says that I'm, i'm not the cause of anyone's happiness and distress yeah material material nature is he doesn't interfere with the material nature unless we take shelter of him if we take shelter of him then he may just he he may he may give us bhakti but he doesn't necessarily work in such a way as to change our material situation to make it work the way we want to work true though yeah he, he doesn't get involved in that sometimes i mean sometimes krishna will change something 
If he sees, it's going to bring that person closer to him. But generally, he doesn't do that. We have to make the effort to come to Krishna in devotion, and then Krishna will give you give you his protection from the material energy. Mm. He protects us from the effects of the material energy, but, but he doesn't necessarily interfere with it. Just like now, we're in this COVID thing. Mm. So, I mean, Krishna can wipe this COVID thing out in a, just by blinking an eye, not even. It'll be gone in a second. But because the demons are prominent, the sinful activities means prominence of demons. And so when the sinful activities increase, the demons increase. When the demons increase, then there's calamities on all levels. But the devotees are protected if they take shelter of Krishna. If they don't, then they're also subjected to what's happening around them. So there's what the whole process is. It's about taking shelter of Krishna. That means depending on Krishna, praying to Krishna, mm -hmm. chanting our rounds, doing all everything that's required to keep ourselves connected with Krishna and devotion. Mm. Yeah, when but we want Krishna, it is very Krishna. harsh situation that person is in, and that person is quite dear to me as well. Basically, you, you know, we, I feel we, I feel pain as well. Yeah, but we want Krishna to, to be our our security guard, our uh, our our employer, our finance minister. <laughs> He's not in those roles. True. These are these are the words of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. We want Krishna to be our finance minister, our security guard, our. Um, you know, every, we, everything material, we have a per particular person that supplies that. So we want Krishna to be in that role. But that's not Krishna's role. Mm -hmm. Krishna is about bringing us to uh, him. So even distress, when it comes, there's a beautiful verse in the... Uh, I mean, look what, look what Devaki had to go through in order to bring Krishna into the world. Her brother was going to kill her on the on the uh, day of their marriage. You know, mm -hmm. Vasudev stepped in and saved his wife as a dutiful husband. But later on, they were put in jail and they had to stay in jail. And then after that, the sons that were born to Devaki were all killed by Kamsa. So she was a pure devotee of the Lord, but still look at the suffering she had to go through. So for a devotee, sometimes Krishna allows these things to happen, but he always protects the devotee in the long run. Mm -hmm. Pandavas were harassed tremendously by Duryodhana, but still mm -hmm. Krishna protected them. He didn't, he didn't stop the harassment. He, stopped, he just protected them from what, when the harassment was happening. Mm -hmm. That's how Krishna works. He gives you the protection you need. He gives you the shelter you need. He gives you the hope and satisfaction you're looking for. But the material world will work the way it's working. <laughs> you know, there's sometimes there's gain, sometimes there's loss. It's just the way this world works. Material energy is, you know, works in such a way as to fulfill the desires of the living entities for happiness in this material world. That's called Maya or Durga Devi. So people worship Durga Devi, why? Because they want material happiness. They don't worship Krishna because Krishna doesn't give material happiness. King Krishna gives spiritual happiness. So Guru Maharaj, we are, we are like maybe I'm on the very lower platform of spirituality and uh, still as a human being I, I find it very hard hard circumstances and um, how do like you know it's spirituality you can't 
focus well, into you that. You just have to have, you have to have faith in Krishna that whatever he allows to happen, whatever he does, is, a, is an opportunity to bring you or us in general closer to him. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Whatever is happening for a devotee's life, it's a chance to go cl closer to Krishna. And that's the whole goal of life, is to mm -hmm. get cl so close to Krishna at the end of life, we go back to Krishna. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for material success. Material no, success. Yes, material me. success is, is a euphemism. Who's materially successful? If you have wealth, if you have fame, if you have um, uh, bodily beauty, does that mean you're successful? No. Success is happiness, and these things are not the source of happiness. Happiness is the, is the fair of the heart where happiness is an exchange of love between two living entities. That's happiness, not how much we have. You can't love your, you know, your furniture, your nice house, your dog, your, uh, you know, your money, your nice wardrobe. These things you can't love. <laughs> so if you have them or don't have them, it doesn't change you. But because people are look at leaving, basing their happiness on what they have or don't have, then they blame Krishna when it gets taken away. Or they say Krishna, you know, he's just, he just doesn't understand. They find fault with the Lord. It's not, it's not, uh, Mara, Guru Maharaj, it's not finding the fault, actually. I may not be trying to explain properly. It's just uh, emotionally that person is so, so broken down because uh, she lost two, two of her sons and her husband in about five years' time, which, is, which has broken her down so much. F finance was fine. She could manage it. She was, there was like, she, she has been up, she has seen so many ups and downs in her life. That's not affecting her. She doesn't even bother about the money or anything else, prestige or anything else. The thing which has broken her down is losing two sons and a husband. Well, there's the, there's the immediate grief that comes with the loss and that's natural. But then again, after one comes to the reality of the situation that yes, my husband's my husband and two sons were lost. I'm sad. I feel unhappy. Then how long do you stay into that category? Then you live your life in that mood of of sorrow. Then you're actually not living. You have to get out of that. You can't change the past. Whatever has happened has happened. Now you have to grow and move forward in life. So we don't say it's unnatural to be unhappy or grieve for the loss of a loved one. That's natural. Um, just like this recently, our temple president, his younger brother, just uh, immediately had a heart attack and died on the street. The boy was, you know, he was, he was 49 years old. He was a wonderful devotee wonderful spiritual master he had. He had a f new family, so many things. All of a sudden, boom, within a second, just a heart attack. Everyone was shocked. The whole congregation here was in shock, you know, and I was part of what was going on. But then again, and there was a lot of grief, but then how long do you stay into that? Do you live your life in that in that in the, in the mood of sorrow? You have to move on. There's there is there is life is full of opportunities to grow, to experience happiness, to experience our relationship with Krishna. So we don't say it's that you don't grieve, but how long? How long do you want to stay in that? That means, you know, you practically kill yourself. As, as they die, you died also. If you stay in that. I 
I think Guru Maharaj, isn't it? Is the great sorrow for a mother to lose the son or a daughter? So she needs someone to pick her up, someone yeah. to give her some advice, someone to give her some association to help her move forward in life. These things happen. Yeah. And I mean, look around, look around you. I don't want to sound uh, making everybody unhappy, but whatever you have, at one point, it will be gone in your life. It'll all be gone. Our home, our relationships, everything, all of this at one point will be gone. It's just the nature of time takes everything away. But the thing is, not, nothing can take away our relationship with Krishna. And that is the thing that is our, that is our nature, to love and serve Krishna. So we go through these other experiences and feelings and emotions and relationships with living entities in this world, but they're all temporary. They're all temporary. We grow in those relationships, we can love in those relationships, but ultimately if we don't have our love for Krishna, then when we lose the things of this world, or even when we lose our own body, we're destroyed. We're devastated. So don't live for the temporary, live for the eternal. That's, that's the message. There's the, that's the, and that is wonderful. It's not something that is not, that's not going to give you happiness. It'll give you unlimited happiness. This world is the way it is. It's a place of, it's called Marchaloka. It's another name for this world. Marcha means death. This is the, the planet of death. Who, whoever takes on a body cannot stay beyond a certain time period. That's the arrangement of, of material nature. That's the arrangement of time. But we are eternal. And our relationship with Krishna is eternal. It's not subject to time, it's not subject to circumstance, it's not subject to anything material. That's the message. That's what the that's the whole message of Bhagavad Gita. Develop your love for Krishna. Yeah, Krishna did mention does mention that in Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. True. We have to come to the reality. We can't live in this false reality that everything we have is going to go on forever. <laughs> mm. It's just, it's just not like it's just, it's an illusion. It is, it is a great illusion, but still, it is accepted so naturally. Yeah, that's why when, when, uh, when the yaksha was Dharmaraj, the king mm. of Dharmaraj is Yamaraj, actually. He's the Lord of Death. His son is Yudhisthira Maharaj. So when he was asking him questions, Yudhisthira is very intelligent. He was able to answer all the questions. The last question he asked him, what is the most amazing thing in this world? And that was the last question. And Yudhisthira, he understood the answer. He said, the most amazing thing in this world, and it's a verse, is everyone see is seeing their friends, their family members, People in general are dying and they're thinking, not me. That's the most amazing thing. True. Yeah. Nice. So death for a devotee is the gateway to eternal life. Death for the non-devotee is the ultimate principle of suffering. The cat carries the rat in its mouth. The cat carries the kitten in his mouth. For the rat, the cat is death. For the kitten, the cat is the cat is mother. Same cat. So therefore we have to become Krishna conscious. Otherwise we will suffer continuously life after life. Guru yeah, I'm just, I don't want to give you some, you know, happy, 
some what they call it sophistry half truths to make you feel good because that feeling will be gone by the reality of existence we have to develop our love for krishna and that's the that's the beauty about it we have our we're young we have our energy we have our life in front of us use that time to become krishna conscious and your relationships, even in this world, as they are now, will become better as you become more Krishna conscious. Mm. So in relationship to that lady you were speaking about, mm -hmm. she just needs to be directed towards Krishna. She can find the happiness that she lost when she lost her loved ones. As it says, Krishna Mata. Krishna Pita, Krishna Dana Pran. Mm. Because we have an, we, because our, our relationship with Krishna is not strong, we don't see that he can fulfill all our desires perfectly, completely, and eternally. The stronger you make that relationship with Krishna, the more you see how Krishna is everything and more. That is that is that that is our philosophy. That is our practice. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying, my guru Maharaj. I'm not I'm talking trying. to you. I'm talking about the situation you gave me. No, no, no. I'm trying to make the lady feel that she should be surrendering to Krishna and still um, trying to chant. So she has. Uh, I'm like she has started chanting now. At least, at least one round. Hopefully, yeah. Whatever you can do to encourage her to develop her faith in Krishna, that will be a great benefit for her. Yeah. She was telling me she can't focus at the moment, so I said, just do. Just chant. If it is lip moment also, it doesn't matter. Just do it. How long has it been since these uh, family members departed? A year, Guru Maharaj. Well, that's a long the time. Last, to person, last person died a year ago. Yeah, that's a, that's a long time to grieve. Yeah. You can't bring back the past. We, 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 we repose our love in something that is temporary. And then when that, that, that object is no longer there, our love is crushed and we're crushed. Mm -hmm. Mm I'm not saying don't have relationships in this world and not saying not, not having affectionate relationships in this world, but all these, the success of that relationship will depend on our relationship with Krishna. Yeah, so try to help her and try to encourage her to chat more and to meet devotees and associate with devotees in that way. I mean, I, I've been through many, many things in my life where people have come with me with the same problems. And, um, you know, I know one lady, she lost her husband. They were really close. But after some time, you know, I kept saying, you know, you know, you have to move on in life. You have to become Krishna conscious. And she, as time went on, and she was worshiping her deities, she was chanting more, she was associating more, she was cooking for the devotees. Her happiness returned. And she was actually, you know, she still thinks about the loss of her husband, but still, it doesn't make her feel like she when he like she used to be. She just accepts it now and. Now her life, she has a life in Krishna consciousness, and that that's become her happiness. So 
she's she's even worried about what must have happened to our son because he died like as you describe in the spur of a moment he had a heart attack and mm. he wasn't there when he died so she said oh my, you know like i haven't even said well this can all she can do in this case is is to offer prayers that prayers are not subject to time so wherever that soul is, our prayers can also help move that soul to a better destination. But you can't bring that person back in the way that relationship was before. It's just things in this world are just temporary. Does our prayer help the soul? When, well, if suppose the soul is gone like that, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, you can, prayer is very powerful. If you send, the more you Krishna consciousness and you pray for someone, the more that person will benefit from the, your prayers. That's why in the Vedic culture, they have the, what is called the Pinda ceremony, where the forefathers have died, and there's a ceremony called Strata the strata ceremony even lord chaitanya performed that strata ceremony for his departed father to give an example that you know by performing these ceremonies you move that soul from one destination to a higher destination okay isn't that is Counted as karma kanda, Guru Maharaj. Sorry to ask that question, but yeah, yeah it is. It is karma kanda, but it it also yeah. has some has some has spiritual benefit to it. Okay. I mean, uh, Advaita Charya performed it. Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya also honored it. He went to Gaya to do it. just to show the example yeah if suppose like you know her son, son has only daughter so who can perform this shot then in that case <laughs> well yeah you can try to get a priest for that then. Mm -hmm. but the best thing to do is just chant the holy names and offer these prayers of the holy name to Krishna for the for the movement of the soul's progress like that. Mm. Krishna hears your prayers when they're sincere. Okay. Krishna is not insensitive to our suffering, but he knows that. You know, if we want to get out of this suffering, we have to become more dependent on his mercy. Bye, so true. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, just checking in terms of time check. Uh, it's one hour over approximately, more than one hour. So should okay. we take more questions? Should we close the class? I Is, there Is there more questions? Is there more questions? Yeah, there are two hands raised, one by Shidevi Mataji, other by Manisha Mataji. All right, Manisha, go ahead. Dandavat Pranam, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisances to all devotees. Guru Maharaj, um, I just wanted to give one example that I heard from my um, husband's Guru Maharaj in a lecture. And I'm hoping that it may help um, because I've been listening very keenly to all of the questions in today's discussion, especially regarding like um, in an Indian uh, family, how to deal with in-laws or if you're dealing with anyone, you know, like uh, who, you know, their behavior is not pleasing to you or you don't accept their lifestyle, they don't accept your lifestyle. So one example really quickly I wanted to give and hopes that will help everyone is um, it's called um, looking at a, a kutta drishti or shared drishti, which literally translates to dog vision or like a lion vision, right? So when somebody throws a stick at a dog, 
the dog will run after the stick and be barking at the stick and very angry at the stick. But when somebody throws a stick at a lion, the lion will run after the man who threw the stick. So we must be like the keep a lion vision in life. Don't look at, oh, this person is doing this to me. This person is saying this to me. I don't like this person. This person doesn't like me. No, step back and look at the whole situation. Why is this happening? What is the reason? Try to see Krishna in everything that, oh, is in my past karma. Maybe in my past karma, I did something bad to this person. So now something bad is happening to me, right? Maybe it's my own karma that this is happening. And then at the end of the day, I would like to say, always see that inside each and everything, animate and inanimate, there is Paramatma, right? Krishna is in everything. What is there that Krishna is not in? So if there is a person in your life, in your home, in your relation that is, you know, doing something awful to you, step back out of the situation and try to see what is wrong with this person? Why are they behaving this way? You know, try to see, are they hurting? Everyone in the whole world just wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved, right? Maybe your mother-in-law, she had a very hard life. You know, she's a little possessive about her son. All these things are very common. Maybe try to find out that what are the ways, you know, I can give love to my mother-in-law. Just give the love, give the love, give the love to everyone and pray to Krishna. What is there in the world that Krishna cannot do? Krishna can do everything. Krishna can take you out of this planet Earth, put you on another planet in an instant. So accept that there is a great, great, great power working behind each and everything. Try to see what is the reason this is happening. Step out of the situation and try to love everyone and everything. When you point one finger at the other person, point the rest of the fingers at yourself and think that what is it that I can do to help this situation? There is a one saying like a hon savan ki renka to ao hamare paas. If you want to get closer to Krishna, then you have to become like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also says, the dust of everyone's feet. You have to become lower, think of yourself lower than a blade of grass. If you become in the mood of service, right? And you think I am here, Krishna has put me in this family, in this relationship to serve these people. How can I best serve these people? And always remember that before gold can become a beautiful piece of jewelry, it must be heated very, very, uh, it must be heated and hammered, right? It must be molded. So think of this process, these relations that we have, our families, our jobs, any kind of situations that we have that this is Krishna putting me through a process to make me better. So just remember Krishna in every situation, don't get frustrated, step back from the situation and try to think that, you know what, why is this happening? Look at the bigger picture. Don't run after the person who's doing it. Think that what is the bigger picture? Why is this happening? Is this my own karma that's coming back to me? And how can I love this person? whether it's your boss, whether it's your mother-in-law, whether it's your husband, how can I give this person so much love that they can be happy? And always put Krishna first, you know, whether whoever the person is. I know in America, we're not allowed to talk about God. I still talk about God to my coworkers. I always say, okay, this is God, this is God, this is God. You know, when you put God first in every sentence that you speak, God will put you first too. That's all I wanted to say, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Sri Devi, you still want to ask your question? <laughs> yeah, Guru Maharaj, I think I'm going to pass. Okay, because you know, I we go back and forth all the time. Okay, so thank you very much, and we'll uh, we'll see. You well, should we end with a 
a round of japa. Very well. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So the devotees, we, yeah, we can do one round of japa and then we'll close the program. Sure, sure, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So everyone sit straight. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasa Digor, Bhaktivinoda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. 
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Ram, Ram, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Ram, Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram, Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, 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 Hari Hari. Jai Sri Krishna. Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasri Gaura Bhakta Vindam Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Sri Mahamantra Ki Jai So um, tomorrow, I just want to make a quick announcement. Tomorrow, we connect with the Harrisburg devotees for our session, and that'll be a verse from the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. I believe it's uh, somewhere in the fourth chapter. I'm not sure of the exact verse. So tomorrow, we'll discuss one Bhagavatam verse from first canto, fourth chapter. Thank you very, very, very much, everyone. Guru Maharaj, and, sorry uh, to interrupt, uh, but tomorrow is Wednesday, Guru Maharaj. Um, Thursday is day. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, tomorrow is, oh, I was thinking today was Wednesday. Sorry about that. Thank you for the correction. Okay, yeah, so that's the day after tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll speak on some, some practical, something very practical about how to understand Srila Prabhupada's uh, mission of Krishna consciousness from a practical point of view. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank, you, Maharaj. thank, thank you, you very much for this valuable time and association. Also, thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Guru Dev ki jai. Anand Koti Vaishnava Vrand ki yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.